Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. And today's gear show is all about guidebooks. Now, disclaimer, this show is probably more for beginner climbers or people transitioning from indoor to outdoor. So if you're not one of those people, see you next week. And if you are one of those people, welcome to the gear show. So why do you need a guidebook? Well, when you climb indoors, you're looking at your route, usually they're colour coordinated, so you're climbing the reds and the red follows up the wall and finishes at the top. And there's usually a grading system in an indoor wall, so maybe reds are 6C or there's a little piece of paper at the bottom of it. But regardless, it's really easy to work out the grade and where the route goes. When you go outside, it's a whole different kettle of fish. So we're here at Servos. This is a crag just outside of Chamonix. And as you can see, it's a massive expanse of rock. Where do you start? I mean, if you're climbing at 6A, you don't want to be suddenly on a 7B, getting scared, terrified, falling off, breaking your fingers. You want to find the route that's right for you. So today's show, we're going to talk about sport climbing books. We're going to talk about trad climbing books. And we're going to dabble into the world of alpine climbing books as well. This is the Chamonix Sport Climbing Book. Uh, it's a little nice book that talks about all the crags in the valley. So I find Servos, big Servos thing, and I find the piece of rock that we're in front of. So this is a bit of, as I said, this is such a huge piece of wall, it can be tricky. But what you want to look out for is defining features of the rock. Now on this book, you can see that the grades are written on the red lines, and the red lines dictate where the route goes. So let's say I'm at kind of 6A. I want to find this 6A here in the middle that seems to end sort of halfway up the crag. And you can tell that it ends halfway up the crag because of the little circle, and that tells you that that's a belay point. The key for all these books is at the front. So if you ever get stuck on what one of the symbols mean, flick to the front, have a little look, and it will tell you. So I want to find this 6A. Looking at my crag here in front of me, I can see there's a few features. For example, there's this big rock there, and there's a bin behind it. So big rock, bin, and I can see on the picture that it comes through a little overhanging section there, and then looking at the wall, I can see in front of the rock, you go up straight into an overhanging section, into a slabby little bit that you can see on the book, and at the top of it, there's the belay, and actually I can look and see, and I can see the chains waiting for me at the top of the route. Sport climbing grades are usually in the French system if you're in Europe, uh, so 6A, 6B, 6C, 7A, 7B, etc. That will obviously change depending on the country you're in, so be aware of that if you're in a totally foreign place and you get in a guidebook for the first time. Okay, so that's sport climbing books. Let's move on to trad climbing books. So first of all, what kind of a guidebook do you need? Well, generally, if you're going to a new area, there tends to be one that sort of encompasses lots of crags within that area. Now, it doesn't tend to be that specific. So, for example, the Peak District. There's books that cover most of the Peak District, but if you're going to one crag and you want to know every route, you're going to have to buy a special version. So, for example, this is the Rockfax Eastern Grit, and it covers as it sounds, all the Eastern Grit things. So uh, Stanage, Burbage, Millstone, Lawrencefield, all those crags sort of around Sheffield. So this gets a bit more specific and very in depth. Now I have to admit that I'm a complete climbing book nerd. I love buying them, I love reading the descriptions in them, and personally I write little notes in them when I did routes, how I found them, and, and just really personalise those books. For me, that's why you buy a guidebook. It becomes something deeply personal to you, but that might just be me. So trad climbing books. These are a little bit different from a sport climbing book uh, because they tend to actually give a little bit more information. So for example, uh, this is the, as I said before, the Eastern Grit one, and this is at Stanage. And this is a climb called Congo Corner, which is an HVS, 5B, this is English technical grades. Watch the climbing daily videos if you don't know what those mean. And I'm gonna read the description for this because it's just super cool. A breathtaking pitch of outstanding quality. The technical thin crack leads to a rest below the overhangs, then traverse up and left until a good horizontal break is reached. Move back, right, and make a tricky move to gain a good ledge. From here, the crucial precarious layaway move, high wires, leads to a beckoning horn and a more delicate finish. Awesome description, and also it gives hints to the gear and the rest. So you know that when you get to the horizontal break, there's probably going to be cams in there. 
you know there's going to be a tricky move uh, and then you get a ledge so you know you're going to have to work through that move and you're going to get a good rest where you can shake out again and it also reminds you to save a little bit for that end the delicate finish delicate finishes tend to mean terrifying in guidebook terms trad books uh, will usually give a little bit of advice about gear but not too much so they don't want to give it away uh, and again dot this one has a dotted line and numbers that then correlate to the climbs beneath them so that's a trad climbing book so let's talk a bit about bouldering. Bouldering books. Now, generally and sometimes, bouldering uh, guides are put into main crag guides because the bouldering doesn't tend to be as extensive. But areas where there's lots of bouldering, there's obviously dedicated guidebooks to that. Now, Fontainebleau, outside of Paris, is one area that has many, many, many books. That is just because there's so many boulders, you can't really cram them all in, all into one. This is one of my favorite Chamonix, uh, sorry, Fontainebleau books because it looks at the circuits. Now in Font you have hundreds of boulders and they tend to be grouped into colours depending on their difficulty. And what's quite cool is to follow a circuit around and try to do them all in that area. So this is a circuit book. As you can see, you find the area you're in when you're climbing and it has some drawings uh, of the boulders. It has the numbers of the boulders and it has the grades of those numbers. So you can find number one, work it out where you are, climb number one and then move on to number two and follow that circuit around the forest. What is tricky about books that are drawing more than photos is that it can be hard to work out uh, what bit of rock is the drawing, especially in font. So I generally prefer ones that have a photo because they're more obvious, but uh, sometimes it's part of the fun just to get a little bit lost. So a very specific type of guidebook this. Now I said we cover Alpine books, and as we're in Chamonix, uh, we might as well look at the Chamonix guidebook written by ex-climbing daily presenter Charlie Bosco. It's very, very good. I've taken a big step up from doing your job. So they differ a little bit just because of the type of climbs they are. Alpine climbs are much, much bigger and there's not as much detail on individual pitches. So it will kind of break it down into a general overview of the route. So for example, this is the Cosmic Arete, which is this ultra famous ridgeline uh, just above the MIDI cable car. And it does split it into sections, so there's sort of eight bits to the route. Uh, for example, the first section uh, just says, uh, from the Cosmic Observatory just below the modern refuge, climb the vague gully just to the right of the crest of the ridge. Now, these tend to alter a little bit because of conditions. So one year you might have a very snowy year and then the next might be very dry. So you can't write a guidebook looking at all the minutia of the route because it simply changes. But what they're very good at doing is giving you an overall idea of the route. They will tend to go into a bit more detail on the crux of the route. So for example, on the Cosmic Sorette, the uh, slab section says, it gives the grade, 4C. Uh, remember you're doing this in crampon zone. Climb the slab itself, 4C, for eight meters, bolt of the top of this section, and pre-drilled crampon pockets for the feet. So as you can see, a little bit more detail on it. These tend to give you ideas of uh, where to stay, where you can camp, which refugees, refugees, which refuges are good, uh, and the kind of equipment that you need, and when the route is gonna be in condition. Chamonix is actually a good example of the fact that you might need multiple guidebooks. But this is the sort of all round general guide for the area, and then you get the crag one we talked about earlier for the individual crags. And then there's another one, well there's lots, but this one is for the Onvers, which is a rock climbing area way up in the hills. And it goes into huge detail of all the multi pitches available there. So you might have to get multiple books, but to be honest, there's nothing better than sharing them around as well. So if you've got one, your mate's got one, you bring them together and you can sit in a pub, have a pint, work out the routes, explore them, read the descriptions. And it's just, it's just part of climbing. So you're going to need a guidebook when you climb outside. It's going to take you a while to get your head around it, read all those descriptions, take a while to look at the line, look at the rock and make sure you're climbing the right thing. And you'll learn as you do it, really. It's pretty simple stuff. That's kind of it. Uh, thank you for watching the Friday Gear Show. Make sure you grab a guidebook and leave any comments below if there's any special routes and special route descriptions that you want to share with everyone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.